bei Vorwerk. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes. Yay! Thank you for saying yes. Um, just because I'm stopping the video and I'm making, you know, multitasking in the background. Hello, welcome to my kitchen. My name's Michelle and I'm a team leader in Bentley East. I think a few of you have been in this kitchen before. Uh, so for those, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. We used to do a lot of these in uh, COVID. And since then, we've been doing like, the last couple of years face-to-face -face demos again. It's been so lovely. And I've had people who had been in my Zoom kitchen for a couple of years and then came in and went, I'm here. It's like I'm on the movie set. So it was, it's been quite funny and um, yeah, it's quite exciting. Anyway, so here we are tonight. We are here to talk to you about the amazing differences between the TM5 and the TM6. So I noticed when I looked at the registration list today that a few of you are TM5 owners. Some of you are TM6 owners already and you've just come along to learn something new. And we really encourage that because as I mentioned before, we're back in houses, we're doing face-to-face -face demos. We can still offer Zoom as well though, but we do love standing around your bench and cooking with you and teaching you things and learning from you as well. Like it's a really um, give and take relationship, which is awesome. So that's what we're for. When you buy your Thermomix, we're included in the price. So we really encourage you to host demos, not just one, um, you can have as many as you like. And we have what we call super hosts who host every couple of months and gather all of our host rewards and really are getting so much out of their Thermomixes because they learn so much every time. So that's really exciting. And then, of course, some of those people then come and join our team because they're just organically out there sprouting their love for Thermomix and uh, kind of going, oh, I'm going to do that. I might as well join the team and, and make a bit of a, either side hustle or a business out of it. So... So lots of different options from where today will take you. So the focus of today is the comparison. We do have, I do have both of them side by side. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an idea of how it works, our current TM6 model is 2579 at full price. And currently, if you're a non-owner and you're looking to invest in a TM6, you can invest in a TM6 and for an extra $29 get a second jug or we, we call it a bowl but second jug with your Thermix so they're normally $395 so that's a great offer we've got for our non-owners for our TM5 owners out there we've got an incredible offer for you as well so $300 off the price which brings the TM6 down to 2279 but what we are doing is giving you the opportunity to keep your TM5 what we're finding is that people who have a holiday house or a caravan or kids moving out of home are loving this offer because they get the new one for themselves and then they're giving their TM5 to, as I said, to a family member or a child moving out, niece, nephew, whatever, or putting it in those holiday homes. With that TM6, you will also get an extra bowl. So it's $695 worth of value. So we're really excited to be showing you and sort of what this all means because I know a lot of people with a TM5 kind of go, this is pretty good. I love my TM5. Why would I upgrade? Why would I do that? So this is what we really want to share with you tonight. And if you're all sitting here thinking that, I'd love you to type in the chat if there's any specific questions that you have or any sort of thing where you go, if it did this, that would be the thing that would, you know, really be the thing that would make me want to do it. So if there's anything like that, let us know because we all have a bit of a laugh that we can talk all day. And Mandy's going to nod when I say I can talk. I can talk all day about Thermomix, but if I'm not talking about the thing that's important to you, then it's a waste of your time. So we don't want to do that. We want to talk about what's important to you. But I think if you speak to any consultant or any customer who has a TM6, the heart and soul of the TM6 is Cookie Doo. And Cookie Doo is our global net, I was going to say Netflix, and our Netflix recipe, Netflix for recipes, I call it, global recipe platform, bit tongue-tied there. Um, which has over 90,000 recipes. So what that means for you, it's, it's way more than you'll ever need, but it's, it's about what it means to you. And what it means is that you'll really reduce or completely get rid of any food waste that you currently have. You can take advantage of things like farmer's boxes that come with local produce. So you get a really big box of veggies for a really good price. And then you can go, oh, What's, what's in this? I haven't cooked with that before. Type it into Cookie Doo and get a range of recipes. So it means you're being more creative, you're getting more nutrition into your diet because you're varying what you, what you do and you're not wasting anything. Or at the end of the week when you go, I've got a sad this and a half of that, 
what can I do with that? Type it into cookie dough, et cetera. So we're going to talk more about that as we go on, but I'm obviously excited and kind of talking fast and furious. So what I'm going to do is, so tonight Mandy and I are cooking for you. We've got gorgeous Sandy Manning to chat. And I do have side by side my TM5 and my TM6. Now I do actually have, I'm going to just say, apologies, I've got the black on display tonight because you can't buy black, we only have white. But my two TM5 white machines are actually on loan to two different people at the moment. So yes, I have three machines and that is, I've only paid for one of those. I've earned the others as a consultant. So if that is something that interests you, chat to your consultant or reach out to me in the email that confirmed tonight and I can point you in the right direction as well. So lots of exciting things to talk about. So what we're going to do tonight is show you dishes that are specific to TM6 modes and what that means. So I'm using the rice cooker mode tonight. Mandy's using some other ones. I'll, I won't steal her thunder. She'll tell you which ones that she's using. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction, and then I'm going to get my dish started, and then we're going to head over to Mandy. When you first look at the machines, the bowl size is the same. You can see that one of the very obvious differences is the screen size, but it's not just about the size of the screen. In fact, I'm going to go home so you can sort of see that they, they do look kind of similar. So the beauty of upgrading from a TM5 to a TM6 or even from a TM31 to a TM6 is that the language of Thermomix doesn't change. So we still talk time, temperature and speed. What you'll notice here is that there are three dots on the bottom of this screen. So think of this as like, you know, maybe your kind of Nokia and this is like your smartphone. So this has the interactive screen where I can scroll in both directions and access different information and different things. So these are all of our modes here. And then when I go in the other direction, this is our cookie do platform, or as I tried to say before, our Netflix for recipes. You can scroll through, you can type in an ingredient, you can type in a genre, there's filters, there's all sorts of fun stuff. The other thing that you can do with cookie do is create weekly meal plans, add that to your shopping list and do that shopping online as well. So I'm going to show you what that looks like a little bit later when both of our dishes are cooking. But those are other things that help people save time save money and reduce their waste. So if any of those things are things that you're looking to do, you're in the right place tonight. Okay, so back here, I am making this dish here, chicken and Chinese sausage rice. Now this, I love this. This is a perfect fake away dish. It's exactly the sort of dish that I would have in a Chinese restaurant, like a kind of like a fried rice, but with the Chinese sausage and chicken, it's kind of a great one pot meal. Now. I've got this saved in my week, so I can just go into my calendar. Now, what that means is that if you make your weekly meal plan, whoever gets home first can get dinner started. And when you first go in, you can scroll down and you can have a look at all the different information about the recipe, level of difficulty, prep time, total time, portion size. You've got your ingredients down your left, your method down the right, and any other hints and tricks. But when you're getting ready to get started, you can just go start cooking. Now, this... Um, first step I've actually done, which was marinate the chicken. So it said place the bowl on the top. Pop, oh, actually, sorry, the mushrooms first. So I've already done all of this. So there's your mushrooms and then they were soaking. Now I've actually cheated this step because I didn't have mush, um, shiitakes. I've just got some sliced mushrooms there. So skip that step. And then the next is the chicken. So now it's weighing, it was 650 to 700 grams of chicken. So it's quite a, a big portion of chicken. And then marinating it in some light soy sauce, some oyster sauce. So here's all my sauces lined up here. Oyster sauce, dark soy, and some white pepper and sesame oil. Those to the side. So I've got that chicken ready to go. Mix and combine. I've done that. So now what we're going to do is actually start the cooking bit. So here I've got uh, three cloves of garlic and the ginger. So the next one is the ginger. Michelle. Yeah, Wait, you can't actually see the writing on the screen. Oh, okay. Let me yeah. see. Maybe my um, screen. I'm going to go into my settings and see if because normally my display is quite good on the screen. All righty. Is that better? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I think when maybe when I run the update, it's. Uh, all right, so I've got garlic and onion in there. I've popped the measuring cup on and I'm just going to chop it. Yep, 
Now, for anyone who's already got a Thermix, you've already been wowed by this, but for anyone who hasn't, I'll just give you the opportunity to be wowed as well. And I wish you could smell it because the, the smell of fresh garlic and ginger chopped is so delicious. Okay, so here I have my Chinese sausage, which I um, sliced up before. Now, I know um, other people who've made this recipe have used cabana and things like that. If you can get the Chinese sausage, it does add a very nice flavour. So it's it's not a health food, but it is delicious. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add 20 grams of oil. It says vegetable oil. I haven't got that, so I'm just going to use olive oil. Chink. And it's asking me to pop the simmering basket on top. Now, anyone who's new to the touchscreen technology or the guided cooking, all of the instructions have a little picture as well. So you don't have to sort of figure out what things are. Just look at the picture and do what it says. You can see I've got my measuring cup beside the bowl, my simmering basket on top, and that's ready to go. So that's just going to saute there for about two minutes. And then I'll be adding in my chicken and other ingredients. Now, Mandy, I might just share screen with you for a minute and chat in that two minutes so I can get that next bit on, if that's okay. That's fine. Do you want to share with us what modes you're using tonight? Uh-huh. So I am going to use the high heat mode on the TM6, which goes up to 160 degrees. Um, it's only available in the guided cooking. And we do have a, the, the bowl, um, even though it is the same size as a TM5 bowl, it's different um, because it can go up to this higher temperature. Um, you might wonder, why do we need higher temperature? Well, you can brown your onions, you can brown your meats, you can do amazing things like make um, caramel, which is very dangerous to make because it's too <laughs> delicious. Thank so, uh, and um, honeycomb. So and there's- the, you, Sorry, just, oh, quickly, just to extend what you just said, one of the things about the Team 5, a lot of people say, I love my Team 5, but I wish it could caramelise the onions or I wish it browned meat. So that was one of our biggest things, or when I say our, then we mix as biggest initiatives or when they were doing that research to develop all the Team 6, what are people asking for? And that is, that's that been huge. And people, you'll have the same dish side by side, say our mushroom risotto, and you can really taste that depth of flavour from that sort of it toasts the rice and it, so yeah so that's a really big one so I'm glad you're showing it yeah so I'm doing that and the other one I'm showing is thicken mode so I'm going to be well the, the high heat recipe is um sticky chili beef and the um the other recipe using thickening mode is lemon curd are your mm. is your two minutes up yum there's about 10 seconds to oh, go. 10 seconds left okay well I, I won't go on bring me about lemon curd I, I have made swags of it today. <laughs> and I know you love it when lemons are in season, that you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty. So thank you for chatting for me in that, that two minutes because I will now um, do the next step of my recipe. So so that's just uh, fried off the garlic and the ginger. Oh, my gosh, with the sausage. Oh, it tastes so good. A taste smells even. I'm getting all my words for butter tonight. Now, here um, is the chicken that I've had marinating. Uh, and it actually, when I say marinating, it actually just said for five minutes. But this would be something that if you knew you were making it, you know, when you go home from work tomorrow night, there's no reason you couldn't marinate it tonight and have it sitting in the fridge ready to go. And it would, you know, it'd save you a few minutes, but you did also, I imagine, give you some really lovely flavor. So, in that goes. Next, so it says drained mushrooms, but of course, um, as I said, I didn't do that. So I'm just putting those mushrooms in, which I think will be quite nice anyway. So it kind of is like a fried rice, really, like a special fried rice. And that's doing what you're doing, Michelle, is just showing how um, the recipes are guided, but we can um, override things. Absolutely. And it's funny, you know, because before um, COVID, if we we're doing demos, we'd sort of go, don't change the recipe. We don't want people to panic that they have to change recipes because the recipes are perfect exactly the way they are. But we're also big on sustainability and no waste. So we kind of go, I had mushrooms in my fridge. 
that I needed to cook. So I'm not going to go and buy another kind of mushroom to use today when this one might go off tomorrow. So it's sort of about, you know, Google is your friend. If it's an ingredient that you don't have or don't like, just best substitute for. And I tell you what, it'll always give you a lot of amazing options. So now it's, I just added some water and now we're adding some um, the sauces. Now, I learned something interesting from my Asian consultants, and I hope I've got this right. The light soy sauce, it's it's counterintuitive. The light soy sauce is for the flavour and the dark soy sauce is for the colour. So you're getting, because um, they love that light, that kind of nice rich brown colour in the food. So it's quite interesting that it's the dark one doesn't actually have a rich flavour, it just has a rich colour um, and the, the light one is it's the opposite. So this is an oyster sauce. Um, I bought these at my local market and it's a they're premium to gluten-free one, which I quite like. So Mega Chef is the brand. And I've got the gluten-free soy sauce as well because I know a lot of customers who can't have um, gluten steer away from Chinese dishes because there often can be a lot of gluten in them. And then this is the dark one. And it's only 10 grams, so it is really just about the colour, this one. Um, and a little bit of white pepper, so in that goes. Now, you'll notice it did say half a teaspoon. You'll notice I just poured it in. That's another thing. Be authentic to who you are as a cook. If you're someone who would get a spoon out, get a spoon out. But if you're, if you're a bit of a, she'll be right, then still be that person. So you don't need to, to change the way you cook. It's about making the way you cook easier for you. Um, and then this is just a bit of the Shaoxing wine, the Chinese cooking wine, which you just get on the shelf at, at Woolies or Coles or wherever you shop. Um, and a little bit of sugar. sugar. Oh, there it is. In my Tupperware container straight from the pantry. <laughs> I am going to get a spoon out, only so I don't stick my fingers in the sugar container. There we go. Beautiful. And now, simmering basket on again, and now we've got 10 minutes. So, beautiful. So now we will go to Mandy's kitchen while that does its thing. So welcome to my kitchen in Hughesdale. Oh, hang on, something on my screen, get rid of that. All right, so I am going to be making the sticky chili beef, which will show you the high heat function of the TM6, which as I mentioned before, is only available in guided cooking. So hopefully I can get good coverage on my screen. Um, so here's the sticky chili beef. Now, the first part of it is a marinade and what I can do um, I can actually use this little arrow down the middle here and come down through the recipe. So um, also whilst we're there, I'll just show you down the bottom here, you actually get nutritional content. So the, I don't want to look at the calorific content of this one, um, uh, but it's got carbs and protein and all sorts of things like that. It tells you how many people it's going to feed, how long it's going to take, et cetera, et cetera. There's only my husband and my, uh, myself at home, so that will work very nicely for us. And if I hadn't done the marinade already, then I would be just um, just start cooking up here. But I have. So the marinade, though, I can tell you is, is soy sauce, honey, tomato, ketchup and a chilli, which is all um, mixed up together. But one thing I did want to mention about that. So it does say runny honey and I did use runny honey. But I find with quite a lot of recipes like this, um, the, the honey will stay in the bottom of the bowl. Um, so what you, what, the best thing to do is actually just warm it up a little bit. So I, I did the blending that it asked me to do, and then I put it on for about 45 seconds on 37 degrees, just so that the honey was all melted and mixed in as well. So, um, I have done this bit too, which was place the marinade on the bowl. I've put my steak in there. Um, and then, uh, it has been marinating. The wonderful thing about this though, too, is that, um, it does a nice bit of wash the bowl in between. So I did do the marinade a little while ago, but I've still got the same bowl there because obviously it's still got all those nice bits and pieces that are left in there. So taking the lid off has always got to be really careful. Make sure that you tear so that um, you actually put the right amount of sesame oil in and um, don't mess that up. So, love the smell of sesame. Okie doke. Little over. Then I'm going to put the marinated steak and the um the, the marinated steak and the marinade in. That's just going in the top. Okay. 
Uh, ensure the mint is distributed evenly. So it is. And then it's asking me to put the splash guard on. So this is what you do use when um, when you're using high heat. So the lid goes on, and then on top of that, we have the splash guard. And you'll see there's a little flange either side on this, which will also be captured into the um, into the arms uh, as it goes on. But the, the splash guard is on there. Then you have to click done. And now all I've got is just those three little lines and I don't turn it to anywhere, I just literally turn. And this is going to cook for five minutes on the high heat. And um, you probably won't be able to hear it, but it will actually start sizzling, which is awesome. So back to you, Michelle. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. So, thanks for coming back to me. So, is there anything in the chat? Because um, I haven't had a chance to look at the chat. Is there any questions or anything we haven't answered? Anything that anybody wants to know so far? No, not at the moment, Mish. Not at the moment. Everyone's very quiet. Wow. Yeah, very quiet. It's lovely to see you here. But we're happy to have you chat with us. We love it when you chat. So, I'd love to just, um, because I am going to show you Cookie Do, but I feel like I you've only got five minutes and I've only got five minutes and it's probably not quite enough um, time. But what we were also going to talk about was just the benefits of having us over to do a demo at your house. Because what that means, as I mentioned before, is you get to learn a lot. So you get a couple of girlfriends over. We supply half the ingredients. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. It doesn't have to be girlfriends. A couple of friends. We're not fussy. Um, over and we often find that sometimes people go oh I'm a bit embarrassed and invite people over for a demo and then I go just mention it to people because a lot of people I know will go oh I've heard of that but I've never seen it I'm quite interested to see it so it's funny when you put it out there you'd be surprised how many people actually say to you oh actually I would like to see that and the beauty of a, a demo is it is exactly that. So it's not like, say, you go to a makeup party or a Tupperware party and you feel like, oh, I better buy a lipstick or a drink bottle. You know, no one's going to feel obligated or pressured to buy a thermomix. That's not how we roll. And I think anyone here who knows any of us knows that that's not how our business operates. So it's really about us providing people with a solution to whatever their problem might be in the kitchen and with their meal planning. So the beauty of that is you've already got your family. It's a great way to learn more. We've got a really great menu matrix so we can do different dishes each time. So you get to learn something new each time and do some different themes each time. So we might focus on cookie do. So we teach you about cookie do and meal planning. We might focus on the Varoma. Who's got a Varoma at home and maybe hasn't used it yet? We have a little bit of a giggle amongst the consultants that, that People will say to us, well, I can get one of those with mine. And we always have a laugh and go, go deep in your cupboard. It's probably there. <laughs> so for anyone who's not sure what I'm talking about, because I'm, I'm not using this tonight, yeah, you're, you, you're not using this tonight either, are you, Mandy? So, you know, and you can do a lot in your things without using the Verona, but we always say if you're not using it, you're only getting kind of half the value out of your thermomix. So we do really encourage you to use it. And if you go, but I don't know how, that's the perfect time. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, I love mine too. Uh, it's a perfect excuse to have us over to do a demo and use the Varoma because once you, it's a bit like anything, once you see it used once, you can kind of then think about a whole conversation will be around how to adapt that to other recipes. And it also is really great for if you are looking to, you know, feed a crowd or make the size of what you're cooking bigger than, you know, than what it might be already. So Mandy, are you, are you, did you just wave at me then? Are you good? No, no, I'm, I'm a, a minute 39. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, I'm still three minutes, so we're good. Um, so we have some amazing hope rewards. I'd love to know who here um, has got or has started collecting our host rewards. So thermo servers, mats, we've got some new amazing things that we've added to our collection, like our vent, um, vent smart. No, that's the Tupperware name. <laughs> Vacuum seal. I am really getting my words mixed up tonight. Um, vacuum seal. It's a little quiz. You have to guess. I'm going to use a word that's similar to the word and you have to guess what I'm going to say. Our vacuum seal containers and it's a lasagna dish size. So that it's incredible because you can make a lasagna, take all the air out of it, stick it in the freezer, 
and then you're not going to get all that frost all over it. And then the battery silk container can also go in the oven. So we've got all these amazing products that support the thermics and support cooking from scratch as well, which is really what we all, um, I think, what we all kind of aim to do as best we can to avoid the extra expense of buying the processed foods, but also the um, additives and preservatives that come along with that as well. You, looking you at can me? probably come over to me if you would right. like. Right. I'll see you back soon. I've only got a couple of minutes of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so mine is just finishing off. You can see that the lights have gone red on the Thermomix. I don't know if you can see steam, but there is steam coming out here. It smells absolutely amazing. And we have just seven seconds to go um, until this is cooked. And then um, it's going to be – oh, here we go. That was quick. All right, so transfer to a bowl. So I've just washed what I actually took it out of. And remembering always to turn your lid upside down when you take it off. All right, so any drips sort of stay in the lid. Now, let me see if you can see. Oh, I've got a little liquid there, but um, beautiful, amazing meats there. Thank you, Dave. Next, I'm putting in um, about 300 grams of mixed veggies. I think I went over, but this is for a stir fry. So um, I basically just went into the fridge, as Michelle said. You know, we just try and use what we've got. Um, I do like when I'm doing stir fry to have some of these little numbers, but they're very hard to get um, fresh. So I did get a can of those, but I'll freeze the rest and use them next time. But I've got a um, bit of onion, I've got some broccoli, I've got some beans, I've got some um, cauliflower and some carrots. All right, so all those are going in. And yes, I am a bit over, but, you know, a little bit of extra vegetables never hurt anyone. More oil. Okay. And this time I'm just putting the simmering basket on top. So um, my lid's going on top and the simmering basket's sitting on there. And that's going to cook for three minutes. And it's also automatically gone on to reverse. Now, um, it took me a while to work this out on the TM6, but that is where your reverse is. So you can uh, just literally touch it. But it, it's set for that because we don't want to chop these veggies. So I'll get that going and we'll head back over to Michelle and she can do her next step. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I. it is pretty timing, Mandy. So we've had 10 minutes of cooking here. I'm going to show you what that looking like so far. Oh, it's bubbling away. I really wish you could smell it. So that's heated up the water that's in there and I've got my chicken, my mushrooms, Oh, it smells like a Chinese restaurant. I love it. Love it. All righty. So put that back on there. I didn't need to take that off. I just took it off to show you. All righty. So next we've got the rice. So it's 350 grams of raw rice, which I've soaked earlier. And I am just going to transfer that. Let me get a, now that I'm using my spatula and my handle, I'm just going to explain, to explain that in. It said to put a bowl on and to um, weigh the rice in. So I figured the simmering basket was the perfect bowl because I could rinse it quite easily and I knew that it would be very easy for me to transfer it in. The other way to use that is um, if you are doing something with brown rice and you need it to be sort of soaking during the day, you can have that inside a the thermo server and it's the perfect fit inside the thermo server. Now, it's just, just a quick another point there. Sorry, Michelle. Um, is that, of course, the simmering basket is a bit different to the PM5 simmering basket. Thank you, actually. Very good point. So the simmering basket, you'll see here, actually has a safety lid, um, and you'll see that you can pick that up with the lid on and it'll flip open, or you can do it with the lid off. The beauty of that just means that you can fill that right to the brim, and as long as you can shut that lid, it's perfectly safe. So there's no risk of that you'll block it from the inside. So that little step down means steam can escape. So you're not going to create a pressure cooker situation. Um, now it's just says to combine, but I'm going to actually add some peas as well because in a fried, you know, in any kind of fried rice, I feel like that's really something that should exist there. And 
I don't know about you, but whenever I make anything that's sort of any kind of curry or any anything like this, I just like to have something green in it. So is anyone else like that or is that just my little weird thing? I'm weird. I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. I can accept that. But I reckon there's more than just me out there who feels that way. <laughs> All righty. So to combine, simmering basket on top. And I'm just going to bring you into, you can see the screen here now. So that is what it looks like when it's a mode. So when you're doing a number, you, you go into that number. When it's a mode, it's just on or off. So, so you just do the mode, turn it on, and that's it. You can walk away. So don't bring the washing in, walk the dog help the kids with their homework, scream at the kids to tie to their room, don't have a glass of wine with your neighbour, whatever. Whatever it is, you don't need to be standing there. And that's the best thing. I'm ready. You're ready? Yep. Lovely. All right. So um, that was my veggies stir frying in there. And now it's asking me to pop the beef in. So I'll show you veggies there. Our preserved beef. Can't believe I've got to wait till tomorrow night to eat this. All right. And again, we're going to put the um, use the high heat. So the lid goes on and the splash guard. Done. Three minutes. And that is going to be my dish done after three minutes or the first dish. So, you know, what a quick and easy dinner that is. If you think about, you know, you can do, you can prepare the meat in the morning, leave it marinating, you can have all your veggies all chopped up to go. And really it's probably taken, you know, 10 minutes. So um, anyway, I will keep going with this um, and over to you, Michelle. Sorry, Mandy, what are you, um, what did you say? Oh, yeah. I just said that I was going to do, um, this has got three minutes to go uh, and then that's done and then we can show why it's good to have a second bowl. Ooh, and then lemon bread and stuff. Cool. So have you, I was just going to talk about these um, host rewards because the thing about my dish is it's got like 25 minutes to cook. So we'll, once you've got your things cooking, I'm going to do some cookie do. But I wanted to ask, who has got any shape or size of these guys? Or are you looking at me going, I don't know what that is. What is that witchcraft she's holding? So for those in the know, are the best. <laughs> these are thermosavers. Now, when you get a thermomix, there are a couple of things that I really recommend that are great to have. And we do say it comes with everything that you need to start cooking. So we certainly don't think that you need to go out and go shopping and buy lots of things in our mix shop. Although if you have a look at it, you will be tempted because we've got a lot of amazing things on there. And actually at, this, at the moment, there's like 25% off sale. So it's definitely worth checking out. But you can't buy these. You can only get these by hosting. So you, a couple of friends, a three course meal, and you get to choose a host reward at the end. So this particular is, is the oval. It's a two and a half litre oval thermal server. So this is great, particularly when you do things in the Veroma. But I also use it for lots of other things. Like if we have a barbecue, I put the cooked sausages in it. So, you know, if you're doing anything like that, or if you've got, you know, a lot of people over and you've got different food, you can have multiple thermo servers down the table with all the food staying hot in it. But it's like a thermos flask and we keep the food hot or cold for two hours. So, and in fact, I actually find that if you pre-warm it, you can actually keep it hot for even longer than two hours, which is amazing. So then we've also got uh, this size here. So this is a 2.2 and it actually currently is tons in white. And my 2.6 is the dishwasher. So the current size as a host reward is the same as this, but a bit taller. So the size of that increased because the bowl as a 2.2 litre, you needed a bigger thermos server to put the food in. So picture this, you finish cooking dinner, you add it to the thermos server, and it's sitting on the bench and, you know, people are coming and going. There's dancing, footy, art lessons, music lessons. Someone's going to the gym, whatever, whatever's happening. Because I know all of our houses seem to have these kind of revolving doors of activity going on. But dinner is in the thermo server or, and hot as people come in and out and they can have their dinner that way. Or when you have a dinner party, 
you cook all the food and it's actually hot on the table and you as the chef or the cook is at the table with your guests having dinner with them what was that? um the, the other thing with the, the 2.2 liter thermo server the white one is um it will fit in your varoma for for making yogurt Oh, yes. Yeah, the rice was raw. It was just rinsed. So it was jasmine rice and it was rinsed. That was it. So it's cooking now, as Sandy said, on the rice cooker mode. Um, yeah, so as uh, Mandy just said, this smaller one, which has a, as a host reward, you can get it in white with a clear lid. And you can actually buy the clear lids as a spare part on our website. And I was actually chatting about this with a customer the other day saying, it's actually great to have a couple of spare clear lids because then if you take this to a barbecue with a salad in it and it's got a clear lid, it can sit on a table with a clear lid and people can go, oh, there's a potato salad, there's cold store, there's whatever in there. And it's a great way, keeps it fresh, make sure there's no you know, flies or whatever, keeps any bugs out, but it means people can see what's there. So I've actually just ordered a couple of those myself. But as Mandy did say, sorry, the Roma, here it is. It does actually also fit the aroma for you to do yogurt. So using the fermentation mode, which is one of the other modes of the TM6. Right, I my dish is finished, so oh, I'd like to show you what um what I've made. Um, and there it is. With that. that, that's um the sticky chili beef. Yum. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to show you why it's so good to have a second bowl and blank back. So I'm going to get out of this recipe. And when you're looking on the screen of your Thermomix here, um, there are three dots. Wherever there's three dots, you can do something from there. So with these three dots, I can go into a preview. I can, um, except that I'm at the end of the recipe, so it's a bit difficult to take it back a couple of steps. Oh, hang on. Here we go. So I can go into... Um, a preview and see what's coming up uh i can also you know how um in a situation like this we always have all our um everything ready to go but that's not how you always cook so you can go into recipe detail and you can go down and you can have a look at all the other ingredients you need to get you can also pull your scales up if you need to but the one i'm after is actually cancelling the recipe because i'm going to move on to my next one all right so this is where the second bowl comes in really handy. So I can just move straight on to my next recipe. So back in my week, lemon curd. And if you haven't made the mixed lemon curd, oh my goodness, it is absolutely awesome. So um, I will start putting the, the ingredients in, but I'll explain why I'm making it. So it said clean and rinse sealable storage jars in very hot water and leave to dry. Now, what I would love you to do is pop in the chat. How do you sterilize your um, your jars? I, I'm really interested to see if I'm going to give you some little bit of advice that I got um, from someone uh, yesterday. All right. So um, I'll keep going. I've got 240 grams of white sugar. So that's just going in. I have my lemon juice and I have a lot of lemon juice in here, okay? So the reason I'm making it, I am a member of the CWA and um, we have, um, I am now with my Thermomix and my um, lemon curd, I am a chief lemon curd maker for the CWA, branch, the CWA. And we are at a thing called Botanica on the weekend. Um, and I would be given a heap of limes and a heap of lemons make bucket loads of this so all right 120 grams of unsalted butter goes in as well just cut that into chunks and then three eggs so i broke them beforehand and the wonderful thing about this is Literally, in 10 minutes' time, I will have lemon curd. So all I'm going to do is turn that dial. That, that is the thickened mode. Um, it's also used for – I'm not going to turn it just yet so I finish talking because it can be a little bit noisy. 
But um, you can use it for your custard. It's used in your vegetable sauce, your hollandaise sauce, all those sorts of things. Uh, and um, just the tip I was given by a CWA lady who does lots and lots and lots of jams. I said, what's the quick way to sterilise everything? You put your jars and you put the lids in, obviously not plastic lids, in the oven, 120 degrees, half an hour. There you go. So you can have a, do a whole tray full of them all at once. Anyway, I'm going to turn this on, get this going. And I think you've got plenty of time for cookie do now. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. We did a school play last week and they did Mamma Mia. I have been singing ABBA songs ever since, so look out. <laughs> it's like the movie. You know how the movie is like they say a line, it leads you to a song. If you say a line to me that's an ABBA song, look out. <laughs> um, beautiful. All right, so I am going to share my screen and talk a cookie do to you. Um, is there anybody here tonight who doesn't have cookie dough? Let's get this card out of my slide. Oh, hang on. There we go. Oh, no, that's that's my shopping bag. That's not what I wanted. Hang on. Can you see my cookie dough? No. No, we're seeing some assignments. All other things, didn't it? Sorry. Let's try mm -hmm. again. There, shall we? I've got too many tabs open. I've got too many things. That, I always say that to the kids about my brain. There are too many tabs open. Math. All right, here we go. Let's try again, shall we? Here we go. Okay, press that one. Press this one. Because the... um. Yeah, you're good. In the way, and when I moved the control bar, it went into my, you know, the Cuba shopping cart or something like that. All right, there we go. Hello, Thermo and Mish, what would you like to cook today? Um, so did you know that you can go into your profile and you can call yourself whatever you like? One of my customers, her machine says, hello, gorgeous, what would you like to cook today? So you can call yourself whatever you want. If you want to encourage your husband to cook, maybe change it to Hello Stud or something, and then he might like to be called a stud every day and he'll turn the thermomix on to do the cooking. <laughs> so one of the things that you'll notice is that it looks the same here as it did on my thermomix screen, and you can also get the app on your phone. So it means that it's really easy to use and you're not using, you're not having to learn different formats for different devices, which which is a really a huge plus because a lot of people kind of go, oh, I'm a bit scared about the technology. But I just want to assure you, you're already using the technology. Unless you're still using your old Nokia, if you've got a an iPhone or an Android or some smart device, you are already using this touchscreen technology. So whether that be on the Thermix and that navigation, and I actually find particularly people with teenagers, I'll have some customers going, oh, I don't know what to do. And the teenager's like, mom, you just go, and they just press all the buttons and next thing they've got a recipe cooking. So, you know, it's very intuitive to them because they've grown up with it. But we've had touchscreen for a while now, so I think it's quite intuitive to all of us as well. So if you're just sort of scrolling and looking for inspiration, you can scroll down and you'll notice up here it says featured for you or themes. So the for you is that it will actually recommend things that are specifically for you based on things that you've put in there. So you can go into your profile and select whether you're a classic cook, a chefy cook, a vegetarian cook, a time-saving cook. So um, you can play with those. And I actually change mine all the time. So it feeds me different things. So if I click in for you, I can see that based on what I've said, it's going to recommend some um, some recipes that will fit that, that bill. So, and in fact, I have to say, all of those that it's recommended there. I haven't made them all, but I would. I have made that one. I've made that one, but I haven't made the other. So now I'm like, oh, that sounds good. So you can go in and see what it's recommended for you, or you can go in and just look at what's featured. So there are always new collections and always very sort of seasonally focused as well. What you'll notice here is, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about our mix shop, but we also have the some a new rose gold uh, bunt tin, which is actually to cook rice in your Varoma. You can also cook a cake in your Varoma, which is probably what that one is. So there's lots of different things there. So when you're in Cookie Do, the way it really works as far as you 
meal planning is that you might go, right, we like to have a chicken dish a couple of times a week. So if I type in chicken, for example, it is going to load lots of different chicken recipes. Now, what you'll see here too is the variety already. So a lot of people talk about oh, the hardest thing about cooking is figuring out what to cook. That's where Cookie Do comes in. So I know that people with a team five, you know, they've got the chip that it came with. A few people invested in more chips. Um, some people did get the cook key. Now, if you got the cook key, that was great because that did link with Cookie Do and you could actually then do some meal planning and get more out of that because of the cookie do platform. Um, if you didn't get a cook key and you've got your TM5 and you want to, you know, you want to stick with your TM5, we do actually, we are offering you the cook key as a hosting opportunity as well. So you host a demo, learn more about your Thermix, get a cook key and link yourself with cookie do, which gives you more options. So you can see here there's variety. So if you kind of just go as a family, right, we want to have a couple of chicken dishes in a week. You've got choices here, chicken curry, chicken lasagna, chicken soup, chicken um, burgers. So lots of different options here. Whole chickens, which is like a sort of a layered chicken dinner using the Varoma. So there's all different options here. When you're looking at those, then you can actually scroll through and kind of, you know, pick the one that you like the look of and then go, oh, yeah, turmeric chicken. That sounds really interesting. And you can go into these three little dots here and go, yeah, I'm going to add that to my week. So let's have that tomorrow. Save that in there. Now, if I'm going to cook that tomorrow, I'm going to need to add it to my shopping list. So here I can go add to my shopping list. Now, we like to have chicken a couple times a week. So, oh, this, I've had this before, this family chicken galette. I can recommend that. So let's go, all right, let's add that to the week. And we might push that out till Thursday. And again, I'm going to need to add it to my shopping list because I'm going to cook that then. All right, so then what else? Well, we like to have a couple of um, vegetarian meals. So I know I've got some pumpkin because I actually did get a, a veggie box last week. So I got a veggie box from Pino's Produce, which is Paran Market, um, and I got a whole little butternut pumpkin in it. So now I'm going to go through and see what do I like the look of there. Oh, now, have you had this? Has anyone had this one before? Pesto spaghetti with roast pumpkin. It's absolutely delicious. So let's have that. Uh, did I have something for? No, I've already got that night. Yeah, we'll go there. And... Pumpkin soup, we all love pumpkin soup. Let's add that to the weekend because that's a really good thing to have on um, Saturday when we get home from sports. Beautiful. So you kind of see how what I'm doing here as far as you can just type in an ingredient that you either have or that you like and then scroll through and see what all your different options are. Now you'll notice here that I've got lots of filters set. So when you first sign into Cookie Do, you're It'll say one filter and it will be defaulting to searching within Australia. So you can go in and you can add other countries. You can add other languages. Um, if I, I've got the pumpkin there, I might go, you know, I want to cook pumpkin and I want it to be a pasta and rice dish. So you'll notice actually that it said, you might actually, I probably tick that a bit quick. So I'm going to say I've got pumpkin. There's 319 results. I don't want to scroll through 319. So I would like it to be a pasta and rice dish. Now I've got 16 to choose from. Or I might go, I also want to have a look at the main dishes that are vegetarian. So now I've got 61 to choose from. So now I can scroll through and, again, decide what I might like to have with that pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin. and Oh, that sounds exciting. Oh, look at all those. I love it when I do this with customers because um, I always stumble across recipes that I may not have seen before. Now this I have seen before and I love it. And In fact, I'm going to cook that on the weekend. So add to the week. We'll cook that on Sunday. Beautiful. Lovely. So now that you've done that meal planning, now the beauty of this is get everyone in the family to pop the app on their phone and say to everyone, right, I want you to choose two dishes each. And that just, again, it takes that kind of mental load off you having to do all that work. So when I go into my week now, you can see that I've got all these things planned for the week. Now you can look at that in two different ways. So you can look at that in this list view. So you can see here and I'll share with you, this is what it also looks like on your TM6. So you can change the view on your TM6 as well to this calendar view. Now, what that does is show you things that you've done previously as well. So what that means is that you might go, oh, do you know, that, um, that 
beef chili brisket that we made last week. That was delicious. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to actually move that to another day and cook it again. Or you might have planned to make it today, but you've ended up out for dinner or something like that. So you can just go, right, I'm going to bump that to tomorrow. Um, who's heard of chaos cooking? I did a little bit of chaos cooking. One might argue that every night is chaos cooking at my house, but I did a little bit of um, chaos cooking the other night after a recommendation and did the smash burger taco. If you haven't done that yet, I can highly recommend it. All righty, so you'll see on the side here, I've got my shopping list and I can go show ingredients. Now, the cool thing about this is that it will show you by category or by recipe. Now, if you're still someone who likes to walk around the supermarket, Look, if you look at by category, you can see baking ingredients, beverages, cereals, cold meats, dairies, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through the supermarket and it's all filed in the, the right area. So you can be doing the right things at the right time. If, however, you'd like to do some online shopping, you can look at it by recipe because you might also go through. I'm oh, sorry, what I should have also said is when you were here is to tick off the things you've already got in your pantry. So you can go, oh, yeah, I've got some dark brown sugar. Yep, I've got sugar. I don't need to buy water. That's fine. Uh, corn flour I've got. So you go through and you tick off all the things that you've already got in your fridge or pantry. Um, and you can go through by recipe because you might actually go, oh, hang on, I made that yesterday, so I'm going to remove that. I don't need that on the shopping list anymore. The other thing that you can do is scroll down to the bottom and add any other items you might need. So whether that be pet food, cleaning products, tissues, um, you know, uh, if maybe you're having steak and salad one night. So you add your steak on there, for example. So you add in any additional items. So you've got your complete shopping list. And then you go up to this magic button where you've got a couple of choices, actually. So again, if you need these things urgently and someone's on their way home, you could go in and go um, share the recipe and it will copy it to the clipboard and you can text or email to someone and say, hey, here's a shopping list. Can you grab those things on your way home? Or... A very popular option here is to click on the magic button that says order ingredients and it says choose your store. Now, at the moment, it's Woolworths. Um, we are talking to other major shopping um, supermarkets as well. However, they're not set up in their back end to accommodate it yet. So Woolies are the lucky ones. And you can see here it's got all of those ingredients. But see here it says swap. So if I go, well, let's put the white wings one down, but actually... I'm going to have a bit of a look at that because I probably don't need white wings. I'm happy to get the um, good old Woolies home brand. It's $3 cheaper, $2 cheaper rather, and I can just swap that out. You can see now that that's changed that in my shopping list. So you can go through and do that with all your ingredients. And then when you're ready, you can go add to cart and you can see that's my um, list down there, add to cart. And then you can choose to have those things either delivered or direct to boot. How does that sound? Has anyone used that yet? I know it's been a very, very popular option. Now, the other thing that customers do is what we call reverse meal plan. Now, the reverse meal plan is exactly what I mentioned before. You get your box, your farmer's market box, or you go to your local market or supermarket and go, oh, cauliflower's on special. I'm going to grab some cauliflowers because they're, they're cheap this week. Or, oh, broccolini's in season. I'm going to get a couple of bunches. And then you type those ingredients into Cookie Do and plan your meal based on what you've already got. Is anyone doing it that way? That's probably more, I'm more of a reverse meal planner because I go, oh, what's in season? Or what looks good? Oh, capsicums are good. Oh, that looks good. And then go from there. But other people prefer to do it the other way. So, and look, as long as when you're doing that, if you're doing things in season, it will actually keep your, your grocery bill down as well. So that's pretty exciting. Now, the other thing that is very exciting is that my dish has about 30 seconds to go. So has anybody got any questions about cookie do? Were there any questions in the chat, Sandy? No, there's not. But feel free, anyone that wants to come on off mute and ask your question. Please do. Please talk to me. Otherwise, I'm just some crazy lady talking to herself in a her kitchen. <laughs> You're good at it. <laughs> Thank you, girls. All righty, I'm good at talking to myself. That is true. That is true. All righty. So, oh, can you hear that sound? Can I ask you something? You may. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. It's English. If I you can. had a recipe, 
Hi, if you have a recipe and you want to put it into Kukudu as your own recipe, I have no idea how you've translated into Thermomix. Ah, well, yeah. you can do that. And perhaps next week we should run a cookie do session and show people how to do that. But you can absolutely do that, Ingrid. Um, and I'm right. happy to share that with you. Or is it Denise that you've been chatting with recently? I have, yes. Lovely. She did a demo for me. One, either of us can help you with that. Wonderful, right, thank you. Because I absolutely love this. So this rice cooker mode, this smells so good. But look how full that bowl is. So the rice cooker mode uses the absorption method. I'm just going to talk that down so you can see that going in. My kids are going to be here any minute, I reckon, for second dinner tonight when they smell this. It's fogging up my glasses. But this, I love this dish. It, as I said, it's the perfect fake away. It's exactly the sort of thing that you would get at a Chinese restaurant. And it makes so much. See why I like to add a little bit of green? It does say to garnish with spring onions and um, and um, shallots as well, but this will be tomorrow night's dinner, so I'll, I'll garnish it then. But you can see that my thermos over there is full to the brim. That looks it's amazing. It really is. It's actually one of my favourite dishes, and, look, I'm going to put my hand up and say that Chinese sausage is probably not the healthiest thing you'll ever eat, but, gee, it's delicious. Um, but if you can't have that, have a look at something else and just, you know, do that instead. Or, of course, you could make it vegetarian. Um, and if I was making it vegetarian, I'd probably just add in a bit of veggie stock paste just to add the saltiness because it would be a bit like not putting salami in something, you know, it's that or bacon, it's that sort of adds that saltiness to it. So add a little bit of maybe veggie salt paste and some extra vegetables. So that's um, that's the, the midnight snack and tomorrow night's um, dinner, good to go. So that's how the rice cooker mode works. And I, I'm not sure, I did, probably didn't mention this properly before, but it, it does use the absorption method, which means the blade will actually stop turning. So some of my Team 6 customers in the early days, I've learned to tell this now when I um, deliver a Thermix, is that they'll go, there's something wrong with my machine. The blades have stopped turning. It's like, no, it's actually supposed to because you can imagine if it was turning while that rice was absorbing, you'd end up with all the mush in the bottom of the bowl. But as you could see, that was perfect, fluffy, beautiful rice with no mush at all. Now, are you? have I got more time to talk, Mandy, or are you? No, 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 no. Come back. I'm, I'm ready. You're ready. And, and then you can talk to your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was um, no, perfect. There you are. All right. So just a um, little tip as well, you can use your um, your lid upside down as a little funnel for pouring, but here is the lemon um, curd going in. And um, I know either, I've got a husband lurking, he's probably after a spoonful. But uh, that, is, that is one jar ready to go. And obviously I've got more, um, more in the more in the pot, so um, it makes plenty. And the and the really good thing is, so as I said, I've made a whole heap today, and I've just I've had two machines going, and you just go from one to the other and sterilize the jars and fill them up, um, and do five million other things at the same time because it's just pottering away by itself. So, um, gotta love the TM6. Mandy, are you selling? Are they selling those at the CWA? Yeah, they are. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyone wants to come along, it's at Rip and Lee. It's called Botanica. Um, the the CWA are doing scones and jam and cream, and they've got their jams and lemon and lime curd um, for sale. And there's also a you know makers mark. Um, I think it's a makers market there as well. There's a whole heap going on anyway. It was awesome last year. So um, Rip and Lee on Sunday. Oh, this weekend. How lovely. Yeah. That seems like yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, there's a great recipe for anyone who's thinking about making some lemon curd. There is a delicious recipe on Cookie Do called Edna's Lemon Curd oh, Tea Cakes. There is too. I highly recommend them and you can substitute the flour for gluten-free flour and it tastes amazing. Um, so there you go. Like That's a little bit of an introduction to what the TM6 can do. Uh, if you would like to sort of understand a bit more about that, please reach out to your consultant and get her to come over and bring the team six and 
just let you have a play with it, make something and really understand. A lot of people just saute, you know, if they're already familiar with the Thermomix, just get some more onion sauteed and that alone makes them go, oh, yeah, I get it, I'm sold. So have a look, you've got nothing to lose and we just love cooking with you and, and learning together. So I thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, oh, what was the question? Sorry, just before I say goodbye, I want to make sure I've answered all the questions. No, can we heat up the thermoserve and direct heat on the stove? No. No, no, you can't. No, the, um, the best way to heat it up is just to put some boiling water in it. So boil the kettle, put some boiling water in it. And if I want my food to stay hotter for longer, because the lid, the lid is just a plastic lid, so I'll actually put my silicon mat on top and that will actually keep it warm for um, longer than two hours. So, yeah, definitely. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight. If you would like to book a demo, please reach out to whoever invited you tonight. If you'd like to do the upgrade, again, reach out to whoever invited you tonight and they will send you a link. It is a specific link for you to go in and create your order. And as we mentioned, you get to keep your team five. So whether you sell that and then put that money towards your thermix or whether you gift that to somebody or pop it in your caravan or holiday house, whatever you choose to do with it. If you are gifting it to somebody, let us know and we'll organise a transfer of ownership and then we can make sure we support their customer journey with their TM5 as well. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Mandy, for cooking and thank you, Sandy, for um, looking after the chat there. Um, and thanks, everyone, for coming. Good night. Thank you.